six tablespoons of flat corn oil spread. Next, we'll need one cup of granulated sugar. Next, we'll need a key ingredient, Hershey's baking cocoa. The emulsifying agent that we'll use today is two egg whites. For a little concoction, a little bit of uh, volume, we'll use some flour. We will also need one package of cream cheese. Makes it taste good. One tablespoon of vanilla extract. Some powdered sugar. A little bit of cinnamon. One medium sized saucepan. One square baking pan. Let's get started. Take your pan, put it on the stove. Next, you want to take your light corn oil spread and put it in your pan using an inanimate object such as a spoon. Now that we've got that covered, let's move on, shall we? So, what we need to do now is we need to turn on the stove. Preferably to a medium heat. Wait for the corn oil to start melting and proceed with the rest of the procedure. While we're waiting for that to melt, let's look at the properties and characteristics of a fire. Fire requires three components in order to exist. Fuel, oxygen, and some form of energy. The fuel that we'll be using for the stove is natural gas, which is CH4 plus O2. For natural gas to burn, the outcome is CO2 and 2H2O. For every one CH4 that is burned, it requires two O2 to react. We don't need to supply any oxygen to the flame because there is enough in the air around the reaction to make the reaction possible. The form of ignition, also known as the activation energy, comes from the spark emitted below the fuel source. The spark breaks the bonds of CH4 plus O2, which is created as the outcome of energy being released as the bonds break. New bonds are formed from the elements that were broken apart. Carbon dioxide and water are the elements that are emitted from the energy released. The bonds that were broken from the natural gas prepare these for breaking, which makes it extremely difficult to break a second time. As you can see, all of the corn oil spread has melted. Now we need to add our sugar. Pour in the sugar well still on the heat. Very nice. Stir your concoction around till all the sugar blends in with your spread. Once they're mixed even, it's removed from the heat so you don't scorch the sugar. Now that we've got a liquidy, sugary kind of a deal, we're going to add some cocoa powder and stir it in. Make sure you're stirring it. Notice, it's not all the way stirred in. So. I am going to add the vanilla. This will make it more liquidy. It'll make it easier to stir it. Now that's a little bit more like it. Let's add some eggs. Two egg whites are now added to my concoction. The reason for putting the egg whites in a brownie mix is because the brownies wouldn't become a solid without them. Egg whites are made up primarily of a protein which is a chain of amino acids. Amino acids are the DNA recipe for protein. The proteins will become a solid at 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. In liquid form, proteins are all bunched up on the microscopic level. As you increase the temperature of proteins, they will unravel losing their shape due to the rapid vibrations of the molecule shaking. Denaturation is the name of the shape changing process that occurs during the heating of a protein. As the protein unravels and expands outward, it retains its primary structure. 
Denaturation is not a chemical change, but rather a physical change. The amino acids in one strand of protein that were previously attached to another amino acid in the same strand are also attracted to the amino acids with the same value in other strands of protein. Therefore, when the proteins unravel, they link up with other proteins and become lined up, creating a solid. Without the solid attribute aiding the brownies, the brownies would turn out gooey and messy. Otherwise, you would need to use a spoon to eat your brownies. Now it's a rich chocolatey mixture. Time for some cream cheese. Take your little packet of cream cheese that you previously got out. Make sure it's nice and soft so it mixes in. Open it up all the way. Put the cream cheese in. Mix thoroughly. As soon as you're all done mixing it together, add your flour. Flour time. Take your cinnamon that you've taken out, open the top, put a couple of sprinkles in there. Now, we preheat our oven to 350 degrees. Pour your brownies into your pan. I'm about to put my brownies in the oven. All right, now that we've got a little bit of heat in the oven, let's pop these puppies in for 25 minutes. The heat in the oven is created by a gas burner at the bottom of the oven. The flame that comes from the burner radiates heat to the rest of the oven. It reaches the whole oven using convection currents created by hot air at the bottom and cooler air at the top. As the air molecules next to the flame gain temperature, they start to vibrate more. As the molecules start to vibrate more, they start to bounce off each other, creating more space between them. This makes the molecules less dense than the cooler air molecules at the top of the oven. Therefore, they rise to the top, pushing the more dense molecules down to the hotter parts of the oven. As the cooler molecules that are now at the bottom heat up, the hotter molecules at the top start to cool down. This continues throughout the heating process, creating a current that circulates from the bottom of the oven to the top and back down to the bottom. This heat current passes by the iron rack in the middle of the oven. When the hot air goes by the iron, there is a transfer of heat energy, and the iron gains the air around it until both are the same temperatures. As the pan is placed on the iron oven rack, there is another heat transfer. There is a heat transfer from the rack to the pan, which is conduction. The heat travels from the bottom of the pan to the middle of the brownies. The convection currents moving through the oven are cooking the top of the brownies. Brownies are done. Wait a while for them to air cool. Then eat them. Cut them up first, or don't. No, just eat them. Hey, what are you doing up there? Eating your brownie. Oh, okay. 